Good evening and welcome to the Monday night edition of the Gold Goats and Guns Hour here on YouTube and Periscope. My name is Tom Luongo. Let's get to it. Monday, April 20th. All right. So it's been a hell of a weekend. We, uh, I want to talk about the Putin Merkel summit tonight's talk is entitled the beating the bullying will continue until the empire is restored and there's a reason for that didn't that really have a lot planned for this evening it's been a busy day but as i was reviewing the headlines and um as i was reviewing the headlines before i started the stream tonight it became very obvious that The United States is not going to stop sanctioning everybody, everywhere, putting people in jail, putting pr political pressure, looking for leverage points everywhere it can until either and until something breaks. It's it's obvious at this point. There's there, and I don't even know how much of it is Donald Trump, how much of it is departments that are under that that aren't under his control at this point but it's pretty obvious that um nothing is going to change substantively and every day we're going to be subject to another well we're indicting 12 Iranians and tomorrow we're going to do this and tomorrow and the day after that we're going to put a new sanctions bill on which says we're the Russians aren't allowed to sell gas to anybody and the tomorrow after that of if Putin looks at if Putin says if Putin shakes uh, Merkel's hand with his right hand then we'll sanction Russia for that it's it's it, we're at that point I mean why don't you just like call it what it is it's Calvin ball we'll just keep making up the rules until we get what we want um, and the reality is is the reason they're doing this is because the panic is real. I talked about this on Friday night. I'm going to talk about it again tonight because it's something that we have to continue to pound the point home on that the powers that be are absolutely panicking at this point about the situation brewing around the world. There are too many people trying to get off the reservation. Turkey is trying to get off the reservation. Venezuela is trying to launch a launch a, a new currency regime after the worst hyperinflation in the history of man that doesn't use debt as a basis of its economy um the uh congress is trying to usurp the president's ability to not sanction the russians yet again so the neoconservative cabal built around bill browder and the defunct harvard boys who raped russia in the 90s these guys are still out there with their congressional and senatorial puppets like john mccain and lindsey graham and ben cardin and the rest of them to stop the russians from as one as one of my twitter followers said today stop russia from getting rich and europe to not be free of nato because none of those things are, all of those things are beyond the pale. And it's pretty sad to see this happen. It's pretty sad to watch our country morph into, very quickly rip the mask off and morph into the evil empire. It's actually really quite sad because the United States is not supposed to be this country. The United States is supposed to be the shining beacon on a hill. And that's not happening. And it's 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 really sad, and it makes me. I don't. Uh, I don't like it. I try and keep it. We try to keep it purely on the analytic here on gold goats and guns, but it just makes you angry. The more I learn about this fuck Bill Browder, the more I want him hung by his toenails. I mean, seriously hung by his toenails. Because he deserves it.
Have me banned from YouTube, Bill. Go for it. I'm a nobody. If you're so threatened by me calling you a rat fuck, well. It just reflects badly on you. That's what happens when Bill Crystal is in charge. That's what happens when Sheldon Adelson is in charge. It's what happens when the Koch brothers are pissing and moaning and sniffing around Capitol Hill like they always do. Who's ready to, are you ready to hoist the flag? She, the user 13 that says, am I ready to hoist the black flag? Well, did you see the banner on, did you see the picture I put up with this morning's blog post? She's referring, of course, to the great quote by H.L. Mencken that there comes a man in every, comes a point in every decent man's life when he just wants to spit in his hands, raise the black flag and start slitting throats. Or something like that. To be honest with you, user 13, I was at that point many, many years ago, which is why I built my house out in the middle of nowhere, North Florida, in order to stay away from human beings as much as possible. <laughs> Rare moment of honesty here. Um... <laughs> So, five hundred subs. Yeah, pray for Mojo. It's great. We had a great day today. I have to say, I got something very interesting for you guys before we get back onto the panic. So, actually, talking about the panic, I'm not really sure what's going on here. But this morning, I sent out yesterday. So yesterday on Sunday, I could do. I sent out a marketing letter to my mailing list subscribers. Which, by the way, we hit a thousand people on the mailing list. Today, I just got the notification from MailChimp, which is great. And so once a week, I send them an email of an article, and it's a very heavily copywritten article. It's really my, you know, for design for email style consumption. But then I post that also on the blog on Monday mornings, and invariably, these are incredibly well received. I've done five of these now, and they just, every one of them always blows up, right? And so this morning, I posted this morning around seven o'clock or so while now Camille and Sophie are getting ready to go the so Sophie's getting ready to go to school and Camille's getting ready to take her I cross posted up onto the blog over goldgoatsandguns.com good evening Martin how are you and by 9 55 it's on zero hedge I'm like cool I'm looking at the traffic stats coming on the blog while I'm working on editing a video that I posted this afternoon and I'm like that's kind of cool. That's that's ramping quickly. That's nice. And I went and I checked. And within an hour and a half, an hour and a half, that article did 150,000 views and had 200 comments on it. It was the most heavily trafficked article on Zero Hedge in the past 24 hours, by far, including articles on Elon Musk and Tesla going under, which are usually like easy good for a couple hundred thousand hits on zero hedge to the point where within that hour and a half they moved the timestamp on the article they changed it from 9 55 to 12 15 i i.e to 15 after midnight to bury it on the back of page two and now it's up to about 175,000 views that article would have hit 300,000 views on zero hedge today and zero hedge moved it And I don't know why. I'm not going to complain because that would be churlish. I don't want to stop having Zero Hedge retweet my work effectively. But I just find it odd. And why that article, which was just about Donald Trump and Kanye West and what's, I, what everybody can see is happening is that the, blacks are, the, the black voters in this country are getting off the Democrat uh, reservation. The one about... Black uh, Trump crosses the black chasm. I've got a link down below in the in the video description down below. Trump crosses the black chasm and ends the Democrats. And really, it's just a rehash of an of a of stuff that I talked about in the um, in the June issue of the Gold Goats and Guns newsletter. I devoted like a third of that newsletter to Elon Musk and Kim Jong Un and how they crushed the Democratic Party. And, and how 
we would eventually see the Democratic Party completely implode. And the thrust of the article today, and I'm going to talk about this because this is very important, because this is what I mean by the panic is real. Okay, this is why Omarosa is out there making a fool of herself because they needed somebody who's black to make to say something bad about Trump. This is how desperate they are. They're bringing out a serial liar to try and bring some Demo- bring some blacks back into the Democratic fold because they can see these poll numbers. They brought they trotted out Nate Silver, who's been in the uh, who's been in the desert for the last twenty months since his election predictions went in the shitter. They brought him in. A couple of articles referenced, you know, they, they interviewed him and said, well, Rasmussen's methodology was bad because we're all talking about the Rasmussen poll from Friday that Trump has got a 36% support amongst blacks. Fair. I mean, you know, Rasmussen might have, <coughs> excuse me, made it a very simple poll of and um, and you know just make it really simple you know do you approve of the job of President Trump is doing or not and do you get 36% that's crossing the chasm now to talk about crossing the chasm is the 16% chasm where you can get up to about 16% market um, potential market penetration especially in politics, but then from there, there's the big chasm from jumping from 16% to the next chunk, which will take you all the way up to 35 or 40%. And that's different. And that requires a different messaging. It requires um, different uh, marketing. It requires everything to be different. It requires appealing to people's sense of community and shared experience. And not just technical merits or newness or edginess or coolness or whatever, any of those things. That all gets you to 16% with no problem. This is why I'm convinced that Ron Paul back in 2012 was um, cheated out of the out of the the um, out of the nomination because one does not go from 12% to 16% to 21% and then hold at 21%. That does not happen. One goes from 16% to 35%. That's what happened with the league earlier in the year in Italy. They went from 10% to 12%. Um, the, the, the president, uh, yeah, Mattarella, uh, dissolved parliament early to try and hold elections two months early because they could see what was happening. They could see the league was jumping the gap and they were scared to death that the, they would pull 16 or 17%. And it didn't matter. They still got the 16%. And now they're polling at 30%. They're out polling fi- a five-star movement. They're now the dominant party in Italy. So this crossing the chasm thing is very, very, very important. And if the Rasmussen poll is accurate, and I have no reason to believe that it's not, because black voters in this country are not a monolith. And these people have done all these statistical models on our behavior and everything else in in order to try and peg us into certain little holes and use social media to, to play the Panopticon game and... And and crush us into and keep us in various little echo chambers and ghettos. None of that shit works. And they're wrong. So it makes no, it's very patently obvious to me that once Kanye West made it okay for black people to look at Trump and not hate him. Going from 16% to 35% overnight is absolutely the right response to the situation. With someone as powerful as Kanye West within the black community, and then for Kanye to go to the White House, embrace Trump, and for them, for them to get along, dude, seriously. Romney was entirely, so user 13 pipes up and says, Romney was entirely tone deaf as in his choice of Paul Ryan was idiotic. No, it wasn't. It was planned. Romney was designed to fail. Just like John McCain was run was designed to fail. These guys ran loser campaigns to lose. In that respect, they're both traitors to the United States. Because they designed their campaigns to lose to allow Obama, who's not a fucking citizen of this country, to be president for eight years. 
because they needed him in the White House to set everything up for a permanent Democratic blue wall, which was supposed to take place with Hillary Clinton as president, where they would turn Florida, Texas, Arizona, Colorado, the rest of them all permanently blue, create a 330 electoral vote blue wall, and we never have to worry about elections in this country ever again. That was the goal. It failed. And it failed for a variety of reasons, which we don't need to go over, which we've already gone over a thousand times. But now, looking at the situation, anything over 20% support for a Republican candidate in this country from the black community means the Democrat can't win. Certainly in an urban environment. I'm not talking about like house races or anything. I'm talking about in any kind of statewide race, any kind of battleground state, any kind of a, you know presidential race, forget it. They, they can't. If the Republican pulls twenty one percent blacks, he wins. Done. He wins. They never thought she would lose. No, I know they thought they never thought she'd lose, Archie. And I, I know. And that was their downfall. I can go over the strategy and the tactics of it for you if you like. I mean, it, I've I've gone over it on this uh, on this feed. I've talked about this stuff so many times over the last two years. Um, but it was very obvious it to me in March of 2016, that Trump was going to take the Bernie bros away from, was going to take the Bernie bros away from Hillary because where Bernie Sanders was strong and Clinton was weak was going to, where Bernie Sanders was strong was going to become a Trump strength. Hillary was never going to get those voters back. She alienated them during the primaries. Then she stole the election, right? Then she stole the nomination. Do you think those people were happy about having their votes just cast aside, treated like garbage? I'm going to vote for this feckless cunt? No. This corrupt, evil, freaking Mrs. Emperor Palpatine? Are you kidding me? No. These guys are all dying. They're, these guys are all, these guys are all, are, 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 these guys are all, they're, they're, their suicide rates are going through the roof. Their alcoholism is going through the roof. All of this stuff. And they can't see this? And they think they're going to vote for Hillary? Who looks down her nose at all of them as a basket of fucking deplorables? How many fucking stupid are these people? No, fair enough, dude. You have every right to be a Bernie bro. Unfortunately, no. That's the way this kind of works. I get fired up. When I want, when I want it to stick, it comes out loud and dirty. Patton. I, and, and you're exactly the guy I'm talking about right now. There are millions like you in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio. Virginia. He almost won Virginia, for Christ's sake. Okay? In March of 2016, and then the strategy was, I remember sitting there talking with my, 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 my friend about this, and we both went, this is what he's going to do. And I said all this, and he turns right around to me, right, right back, and he says, you're right. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to go into Michigan, where they don't expect him to go. He's going to go into Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, and they're not going to be prepared for this. She doesn't have the stamina to, to put up with him. She's going to be out there in Arizona and trying to turn Texas and shore up the voting machine fraud in Nevada and Colorado. It's what she's going to do. She doesn't want to have to go into the battle, what she thinks are the battleground stations. She, she thinks she's got locked down. So he did exactly that. And then she didn't have the stamina to go campaign behind him. And they were always one step behind. They weren't one step behind. They were at least two or three steps behind. And then they never had Obama campaigning for her because Obama hates her guts almost as much as we do. It was only when Obama went out on the final weekend and went to Michigan. That I knew that they knew they were in trouble. They knew they were in trouble when Obama went to Michigan on the Sunday before the election. And I went, he's got it in the bag. He's going to win. No doubt in my mind he's going to win. No doubt. What's the likelihood of Trump putting Clinton in jail? Pretty high if Jeff Sessions would get the hell out of the way. But we got to roll a lot of people up before then. We got to get past Paul Manafort. We got to get Paul Manafort exonerated for whatever there's a lot to there's a lot that's got to happen first john brennan's going to go to jail uh that i'm convinced of now everybody else i'm not sure but john brennan going to jail that guy is panicking like you wouldn't believe clapper coming out today and saying that 
that that Brennan's comments are not helping anything. That's that's Clapper throwing him under the bus and saying, "Okay, take his take his ass away in in uh in irons." That's what that is. She never campaigned. And at best, if she ever did, she would still be behind Trump. Well, what they did was, it wasn't even that she campaigned there. She was, I'm talking about the, the television campaign. So Trump started running TV ads in those, um, in those states. And then she would then have to spend money in those states that she didn't, and, and that she wasn't expecting to spend. And she was expecting to spend all of her money in the three or four states that she knew she needed to win in order to erect the blue wall. And then she couldn't do it. And even though she had all this money, she had to spend, outspend him by 10 to 1 because her messaging was crap. And all she could do was repeat over and over and over again. Because repetition matters. Repetition works. You say the same thing a thousand times, eventually people will believe it, even if it's not true. Sessions was the first senator to support the Magnitsky Act. That I did not know. It is obvious. And it is a problem. And Trump doesn't dare remove him until after he controls the Senate. I don't know if you guys saw this last week. You know, talk about the panic is real. Okay. In the same week that they banned Alex Jones, which was a complete desperation move, complete and utter desperation move. Greatest gift the alternative press could have ever asked for was them for them to go after Alex Jones. CNN's too goddamn. This freaking Jeff Zucker is the dumbest man on the planet. Okay, because they've been trying to get Alex Jones banned as a as a as a as a company wide policy for over a year. How fucking stupid are you? You turn him into a martyr, you moron. Whatever. Great. Maybe maybe Jones has got him so triggered that they that's all they can do. They got to get rid of Alex Jones. And Alex is sitting back going, "Yeah, I know. This is great." They're gonna ban, they're gonna ban me. Well, I'm just gonna make myself five times bigger. That's it. We're gonna have Infowars Singapore, Infowars Phnom Penh. You wait, it'll be great. Fucking love Alex Jones, dude. Oh. <laughs> Don Lemon is pretty freaking stupid. I mean, wow, wow. So that that act of desperation. But I don't know if you guys saw this or not. But I, there was a. Poll I saw, I think it was from Charlie, it was, it was a mentioned by either Charlie Kirk or somebody, and I don't follow Charlie Kirk, Charlie Kirk because he's fucking conservative and he's way too, way too normal conservative for my taste, but enough people on my Twitter feed um, retweet him for me that I see his work. Um, but I will say this, I get some information off him every once in a while that's pretty good. And he said, there's, uh, the, I saw this, this tweet from him that said, the poll numbers are real, Holy shit, the Democrats, that every Democrat that's running in a blue state that Trump won, in a red, in a, every Democrat that's running in a red state, one that Trump won, is losing by at least eight points. They're all in the low 40s. Well, out of my head, I'm glad you showed up, dude. I'm, your friend has excellent taste. So I, I, I hope I can keep you entertained. I will drop the occasional F-bomb, so... Just just so you know. But that should have been your big clue that they were panicking because they knew the Senate was gone. The Senate wasn't just gone. It was going to be a bigger, um, it's going to be a bigger majority for Trump than they can overcome by activating all their rhinos, by activating Lisa Murkowski and John McCain and Lindsey Graham and all the rhinos who are actually Democrats. But really, they're just part of the Uniparty. Well, <laughs> bombs all good. Okay, outstanding. All right, so there we are. I'm doing electoral politics now, but I normally do heavy geo. No, we normally do heavy, heavy geopolitics. And I also do um, a bunch of market-related stuff as well. I'll tie all this stuff together in a nice, 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 neat bow. I may not do it tonight, but I will on on over the course of everything you watch, either. Um, the short videos I do and the live streams and you're more than welcome to ask whatever questions you want I may not get to them immediately but I will get to them um, you voted for Gary Johnson dopey weed guy I'm a libertarian dude I mean I'm a hardcore libertarian I didn't vote for Gary Johnson I'm like mm -mm. 
because I knew there's a couple of reasons why I didn't vote for Johnson. Aside from the fact that he's a dopey weed guy and he's a terrible libertarian and his authoritarian douchebag running mate, Bill Weld, is not a libertarian. But be that as it may, I lived in Florida. I live in Florida. There was no way I was going to vote for Gary Johnson in Florida. I voted for Trump. But the main reason, who the fuck is Gary Johnson? <laughs> exactly. Dopey weed guy. Um, the, <laughs> the reason, <laughs> um, Johnson was the libertarian candidate. And Johnson did well for a libertarian candidate. But he was also being propped up by Koch brother money uh, in order to stop Trump from winning in certain battleground states. Johnson wasn't running a campaign to advance the Libertarian Party. Johnson was running a campaign to stop Trump from winning. He was campaigning in states like Colorado and Nevada and his home state of New Mexico, okay, and others. He was, he was, he, he, he campaigned heavily in the states where it was important to take a point or two or three away from Donald Trump so that Hillary could win them. That's why I refused to vote for Gary Johnson. And I knew that from about back in February or March when the New York Times ran a huge article on Gary Johnson. Huge article. We're not talking like, you know, a a simple op-ed piece. We're talking about a 1,500 or 2,000 word front page with the full banner ad, color banner, color banner picture and the whole nine yards profile of Gary Johnson and how he could be the Republican killer. I knew goddamn well then that he was working for the, he was working for the Clintons. What is Aleppo? Exactly. And that's why I couldn't vote for Johnson. Normally, I, if I vote for a president, I normally don't vote anyway because I don't, just don't like to encourage people. But if I do vote, I generally vote for the Libertarian candidate. Certainly, I re- registered Republican in 28, 2008 to vote for Ron Paul in the primaries because Ron Paul's a, a Libertarian. So, um, but I didn't vote in the general elections. I think I, if I did vote for president in the general elections, because I will go to vote in the general four-year elections because there's usually stuff on the ballots that I, constitutional amendments and stuff that need to be voted, that need to be voted on. I'll like ignore all the people running if I don't know them, right? But um, I think in 2012, I think I voted for my wife because I know goddamn well my wife would have been a better, better president than Mitt fucking Romney. So... I, I literally, I think I wrote in my wife. I couldn't think of anybody else. You know, Bugs Bunny had just didn't come to mind. Though Bugs Bunny would be a better president than either Barack Obama or Mitt fucking Romney. All right. So knowing that the Senate is gone, now it's going to be going to come, this, this, this fall is going to come down to whether or not the Democrats can manufacture enough outrage porn to take certain House districts and enough voter fraud, let's just not kid ourselves, um, to see if they can take back the House. But they're not going to get the Senate, so it doesn't matter. Mitt Romney isn't a closet liberal. He's a liberal. Just like John McCain isn't a closet liberal. He's a liberal. And I don't really mean it that way. He's a globalist. And he's part of the Uniparty. The head of the DNC and the head of the RNC, the people who are at the top of both of those hierarchies, they are all globalists. They all work for Goldman Sachs and and Soros and the City of London and all that shit. They all they all work for those people. They all work for what I like to call the Davos crowd. Those that get together at Davos every year and decide the fate of the world over Swiss chocolate and coffee. Behind bunkers. Buffer Dems, another way of looking at them. Yes, Thordoom, the Democrats will blame any losses on the Russians. I'll say I'll go one step further and I'll tell you that the whole purpose of setting up the uh, of, of, of setting up the Trump as a traitor meme after Helsinki and all of this stuff with Brennan and all of this stuff, it's all designed and um, um, Mueller's indictments and all that stuff. It's all designed from the ground up to be able to to have them be able to issue legal challenges to any race that is under two points difference and invalidate the election by by screaming Russian interference. Bet you dollars of dog shit, multiple Senate races will end in lawsuits that will 
not that that will go on and stretch on for weeks if not months that's what's coming so get prepared for it now don't get outraged this is what their plan is because they already know they're going to lose so now they got to figure out how they can not lose after they've lost but it won't matter it absolutely won't matter So, ha! I just checked my email, and interestingly enough, I just got a new patron on my Patreon. And it's my nephew, Mike, who I haven't spoken to in about seven years since the nasty fallout between myself and my family. Ha! Wow. That's interesting. I didn't even go to his wedding. But I love the guy. He's a good guy. He's one of the, Actually, I don't like my sister or husband very much, but I really like my I really like their sons. Um they're both good kids. Or they're not kids anymore. I'm 50. They're in their 30s. Uh who am I kidding? Um Wow. That's interesting. I'm going to have to send now I have to send them an email. I haven't talked to him in years. I'm like, I know that name. That can't. Oh, shit, it is. I know that email address. Okay, sorry. It is stream of consciousness as much as it is kind of planned. So um, I will absolutely be nice to him. He's a good guy, actually. Um, you've never heard Dollars to Dog shit? Oh, wow. That's, that's, that, one's a, that, one's a, that one's a classic. I give that one out for free. Yeah. Um, well, you know, what do I know? You know, I don't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, right? All right. So, um, which is, I, that comes directly from my dad, who had a way with words. He didn't speak. He wasn't like me. He didn't speak a lot. My dad didn't speak much, but when he spoke, it was usually memorable. <laughs> um, uh, all right. So... <laughs> Well, you know, glad to be a ser- your servant, sir. Your servant. All right. So don't don't kid yourself. The panic is real, and so with that panic is going to come even more. Um, what's the best word I'm looking for here? Um, more almost inchoate rage coming from the American Empire. You're going to see even more sanctions put on the Russians. You're going to see more. Um, you're going to see more intrans- uh, intransigence from the State Department and the Treasury Department on everything. It's only going to get worse. Yeah, dollars to donuts. We, you know, we're New Yorkers. We turn donuts into dog shit. So, because we're New Yorkers, and that's what we do. So, um, what do we got? Thirty-three minutes. All right. So. Just expect more of this, especially, and especially, this is especially true as things get worse on the financial markets in Europe. The U.S. financial markets are going to do fine here. Okay, we saw today, like, for example, today we saw there was a rally in the euro, which is, is as far as I'm concerned, is nothing more than the Swiss National Bank uh, propping up the euro so that the Swiss franc doesn't uh, appreciate too far. The Swiss National Bank is n- is notorious for buying the euro and propping it up when it needs to. It's not. I have neither. the The quote is: "I have neither a pot to piss in nor a window to throw it out of." <laughs> Feed a donut to a dog and see what comes out the other end. All right. Now we've just like you know. I mean. All right. That's okay. So it's going to turn into like the Kevin Smith hour in a minute here. So. But Trump will probably it will not get the State Department cleaned out until his second term. So, um, Suzanne asks, was Trump ever going to get the State Department cleaned out? No. So, but let's look at the financial markets. Let's get back on track. So the financial markets are really fragile, even though they don't look it. And I'm not talking about the, the American financial markets. The American financial markets are all going to do very well. And the, our regulars here know what I'm talking about, that I've been predicting and expect a massive wave into U.S.-based assets. And we're seeing that. Today, we saw an, uh, yet a further flattening of the yield curve. The 210 spread is down to 26 basis points. Um, and 
you know, two year yields were down two and a half basis points today. 10 year yields were down four and a half basis points today. That's a big move. Okay. So this was a big safe haven trade. Interestingly enough, that went on at the same time as gold has gotten off the mat and is, is bucking back up towards 1200. So if we get back through 1208 or 1210, we might start to see a short squeeze in gold, but I'm not really sure. I'm not convinced of that yet. I still think we might have one last down leg in gold, but hey, I would be happy to be wrong about that. So, um, but the Euro all last week, once the, the Turkish Lira blew up, while the Turkish Lira has been blowing up, the Euro broke down below $1.15, which was very strong support. And it didn't just break down versus the dollar. It also broke down versus the Swiss franc very hard and the Japanese yen, which is a, so um, it breaking down versus the, the dollar is a capital is kind of a capital flow issue right massive capital is massive amounts of capital moving out of the euro dollar markets and into the dollar markets are out of you know your dollars moving out of the european markets and, and being repatriated at the same time um something like the euro swiss franc cross will t is will tell you whether that's also a safe haven move or not and if it's happening in both asset classes the, or both forex pairs at the same time it's generally a safe haven moves if those two have those two start to go, then the euro yen cross, the euro yen um, pair is going to uh, weaken as well because then carry, then yen carry trades start to unwind because the because as low as interest rates are in Europe, they're just as low in Japan, but the rates are stable because the Bank of Japan targets specific yields and there's a natural carry trade on uh, lending, uh, sorry, borrowing short and lending long. So you, and then once that, once the trade starts to go against you, once the euro starts to drop, then those carry trades have to be unwound. Told you, I'm going to tie all this stuff together. Um, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll try to keep explaining. But again, with repetition, a lot of this stuff will make sense to you. So understand that under, watching the currency markets will tell you what's actually happening why you're seeing the headlines that you're seeing so that's why everybody's out there screaming that turkey needs to take an imf bailout they need to get back they need to you know do everything that we tell them to do in order to um um we have to do everything we tell them to do in order to keep our markets from breaking down what they're worried about is the Turks refusing, continuing to refuse to accept an IMF bailout and get back on the, the gravy train and get back on that debt-based, um, that IMF-based uh, debt slavery and austerity thing. That's what they want. They want to push Turkey into that and get, that's how we're going to get them back into the box, right? And Thordum just reminds us that Turkey and Qatar sealed the currency swap deal to cut out US dollar transactions. Another way to, another way for, for Turkey to hold on to what US dollars they're getting at this point, which is very important. The problem with Turkey right now is that there's not enough dollars flowing in to cover the debt, the corporate debt, that uh, debt servicing that, need, that needs to go out to foreign investors. And most of the banks that are holding those decaying in quality Turkish bonds are Italian, Spanish, French, German, even American, but mostly there's over $110 billion or so in just Italy, France, and Spain, and about another $20 billion in Portugal. What was the deal that Turkey offered the U.S. today? Probably not much, and Trump is going to turn it down anyway. And, you'll, and, and I'm not, I, I didn't see the details on it, I, I, so I don't really want to make light of it. But the truth of the matter is, is that you can tell that Trump's not really in control of this policy at this point with Turkey. I don't think he can be in control because I think all of this is coming directly from the Office of Foreign Asset Control, okay? And all he can do is go along to get along. And ultimately, he's just saying, look, we're not going to give Turkey a deal on anything. Give us back our pastor. The pastor's a CIA agent. Everybody knows it. I saw a thing on Pastor Brunson today that, you know, the guy's got, the guy's got a, a, a church the size of your average school cafeteria or smaller private school cafeteria how's that you know 25 chairs set up and uh you know not even a lectern for christ's sake okay he's not a pastor he's a pastor in name only he's a cia asset is what he is and everybody knows it right they were in a, finally i don't know they, he they wanted he wanted to 
Erdogan wanted to, you know, um, it, it was something minor. It wasn't given back. And doesn't matter. And Trump even then turned around and said, even if you give them back to us, fuck you. You're still going to get sanctioned. We're still not going to lift sanctions. Which at this point is saying, look, we're going to destroy your economy. We're going to destroy your country. And we want you out of power. That's what the translation of these of, of all of these edicts towards, towards Turkey over the last week have been as this goes along. And guess what? Turkey has friends that... Um, I know you thought I was joking. Alleged the CIA asset. Come on. We don't get this angry over somebody that's not our that's not that's not one of our assets. Give me a fucking break. You don't you don't you don't torch a 70-year relationship with a NATO with a with a geopolitically hyper important NATO ally. over some dude with a flock of 25. It's just that simple. You know, if you believe that, you're, I'm sorry, you're terminally naive. So, pull the other leg, it plays Jingle Bells. Yeah, he's connected to Gulen, and everybody knows it. And Erdogan wants Gulen's head on a pike, because Erdogan well damn well knows that the United States was behind the coup attempt in 2016. That's what this is about. That's where this is going. I know Trump wants, Trump kind of wants out of NATO. Right. What Trump wants, but... And I know that, you know, if Trump is willing to go along with this, then that's fine. They we're going to push Turkey out of NATO. And if you push Turkey out of NATO, then NATO is going to start collapsing. And. Right. So we're talking about this now. So Thordum brings up that the pastor has to know all about the coup. He knows all the names, all the players. That's why the U.S. wants him back. Of course. Yeah, um, Mookie, you, you, you know I don't believe that. Could be, Mookie says, it could just be that Trump is concerned about the message of love and peace that the guy was preaching. Yeah, I, like I said, pull the other like It plays jingle bells. So, um, yeah, and that's what this is about. And at some point, at, once we get to Max Payne, which we may not have gotten to Max Payne on Turkey yet, but so far, so good. Um... Once that, once we get the max pain, that's when the Russians and the Chinese will step in. And it'll get interesting from there. But Erdogan knows that he can, he's got leverage here because there's hundreds of billions of dollars of Turkish corporate debt that he can just let default. Go for it. What are you going to do? When you owe the bank $1,000, it's your problem. It's my problem. Right when I owe the bank a thousand dollars, it's my problem. When I owe the bank two hundred thirty-two billion dollars, it's your fucking problem. He has plenty of power. He has two hundred thirty-two billion dollars in corporate debt that can blow up on the European. That can blow up every European bank, and the contagion will spread from there. Because once that spreads, once those banks go under, then the Bundesbank and the ECB have to bail them out, which they can't. Okay, we already have Italian sovereign bond yields are are bursting at the seams while Drahi keeps saying, oh, we're, we're fine. The Italians were out there panicking today saying, Mr. Drahi, please don't stop the QE program. Everybody's panicking at this point. The Swiss National Bank just pushed the friggin' euro up from $1.13 to $1.14.8 in three sessions. They're panicking. They know what happens if the, the euro gets down to $1.10 or $1.07. Carry trades start to unwind. The rates start to go haywire. Euro dollar markets drain. The Dow goes to 27,000, and we're off to the freaking races, baby. And the Turks all have to do is sit there and go, yeah, let them default. It's your fucking problem, not mine. You lent it to us, you idiots. Turkey is a black swan. Yeah, you seize the assets, you nationalize them, you, you default on the debt, and you reissue it in lira. Absolutely. If you haven't been buying gold, you're, you're doing it wrong. I'm not saying that we've hit a bottom in gold, but there's no reason to get piggish 
if you're buying you should be buying little bits here and there and averaging in if you you know i've been telling people this for over a year you buy small lots of, of really high quality gold companies you're going to do really well on the other side of this we just we just published our 12th issue of the gold goats and guns newsletter i just went over the the portfolio i love the stocks I, the timing on them the timing on all of them wasn't great i mean i got i got you know, I gotta, I gotta choose the timing on the day that I publish, and that could be good or bad. And I can tell you that sometimes, you know, you know, the stock goes up ten percent on a friggin' earnings report and then collapses fifteen percent later. I gotta, I gotta go with the day I bought it. You don't. You have your the discretion of when to buy the stock. Thorium reminds us. If I remember correctly, there was a poll conducted in Turkey recently that came out that said over seventy percent of Turks. Per- prefer a closer strategic relationship with Russia over the U.S. If the, if the coup had been successful, Erdogan would have been deposed and a U.S. sat rap would have been put in place. Turk Stream Pipeline would have been canceled. The, uh, the, um, uh, the multiple nuclear power plants with Rosatom, those contracts would have been canceled. The uh, Trans Adriatic Pipeline would be going forward, but it would be going forward with a second train coming from the Shah Denis field, uh, Denis field from the Caspian Sea at unbelievable freaking cost. Martin Ham asks, is it worth buying silver too or just gold? Uh, to I can tell you that we're getting close to a bottom in both of them because the silver to gold ratio has hit like a 15 year high. So yeah, silver is very undervalued. But, and when there's a massive spike in the gold to silver ratio like we've had recently, that's always a good sign that, that silver is undervalued. So you should buy silver when it's this cheap and then relative to gold. And then when it gets expensive relative to gold, when the ratio drops from like the 70s or the 80s down into the 40s, you then buy gold if you're looking to accumulate. You could sell your silver and buy gold, but you have to pay capital gains tax. You got to pay, you know, I mean, I, generally speaking, it's not worth it. What you're looking for is to um, is to accumulate a savings pool, a pool of real savings in gold and silver um, that then undergirds the rest of your investment portfolio. The way I look at things, and this is the way the, the gold, guts and guns um, uh, portfolio is structured, that your gold is your savings. And then on top of your gold, you then have your investment, which is, you know, which is your production or your investment. And goats, in that respect, represents your investments or represents the production of your day-to-day production, whatever it happens to be. It's your industry, right? And then your guns are what you use to protect all of these things, protect your savings and your industry, and you protect that with guns. And generally, in financial terms, that's going to be, you know, some kind of hedge against the portfolio. So in... um so for right now, we're hedged against our gold assets by being short the euro, right? So if the euro drops and gold drops, well, we're making money on the, the euro short, but and our gold assets are, you know, getting a little hinky. But that's okay, because then the euro short will we'll cover the euro short. We'll use that to buy more gold assets at the bottom and then go higher. So that's the kind of, um, that's the, 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 the fundamental idea behind the portfolio. It's, it's built into three different, um, three different sections. Those three sections all represent gold, goats, and guns. And then there's also a loose change list, which is known, which is your speculative bets on, you know, minor, uh, small cap companies, micro cap companies. Um, So yes, the Bulgarians were absolutely Draga, total idiots for canceling the South Stream pipeline. And the new Bulgarian government has been, has been cozying up to Putin to try and get one of the, 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 the streams off a Turk stream to Bulgaria so that they can then sell, resell gas to the rest of Central Europe. So yeah, they were absolutely complete morons. 48 minutes. I got about 12 to 15 minutes left. If you guys have questions, uh, you're more than welcome to just throw them into the chat and I will um, be happy to uh, answer them as we go along. So I don't know if you guys saw it today, but uh, not only was George Soros's um, organization thrown out of Hungary, but now Poland's getting into the act. Now, let's talk about Soros or Hungary and Poland. <laughs> Archie and I were actually just talking about this on Twitter. Um, Eric Paradis. I lived in Turkey in 1999. Tom Luongo is the only guy on YouTube who gets it. 
Wow. Well, that's high praise. I can tell you this. When I published my articles about how Turkey, um, the, the, how Turkey would, um, would be able to, I'll get to Soros and whatnot in a minute. Well, let's go back to Eric's um, comment. When I published the article a couple of weeks ago, um, a week and a half ago, about um, Turkish lira implosion is going to jump the, uh, the Mediterranean, I, uh, that article went everywhere, right? It went to Zero Hedge, went to Lou Rockwell, it went everywhere. It went all over the place. It, interestingly enough, I got a request from a Turkish person to translate the article into Turkish. Now, I did not know this, but this is, you know, I think this was a major Turkish um, journalist because I was like great guns in Turkey for a couple of days. Like I did mad freaking um, traffic to my website and uh, goldgoatsandguns.com and for like three, you know, for, from Turkey for like a week. Like all of a sudden, I'm a hit in Turkey, which is really interesting. So, um, you know, just it's just one of those things. So, Eric, thank you for that. Um, oh yeah, uh, and what's in, what's also interesting is that at, with all the nice things I've said about Putin and Russia, I have zero following in, in Russia. Even though I've been on Sputnik, I've been quoted by Sputnik. I've been had articles on Sputnik or you know interviews and interview transfers on Sputnik. I get almost no traffic from Russia whatsoever. Okay. Um, I got, I got a couple of things to get through, so uh, I want to get through all, all of these. So Soros and Poland and, and Hungary and Poland kicked out of there. Archie uh, er, asked me earlier where I think next, and I just kind of flippantly said this Czech Republic. I mean, let's just go down the Visegrad list. Um, what happens when Soros kicks it? Ask Mookie. Uh, his sons take over and nothing changes. Um, What are your thoughts on the crossover of cryptocurrency and its energy demands from Rexman? All right, good evening, Rexman. I don't think I've seen you in the in the in the stream before. Um, relatively speaking, I saw a really interesting uh, infographic a, a few months ago about Bitcoin and about uh, energy usage and all of that. My thoughts on this are a couple of kinds of one, the infographic, which I could not get sourced from anybody. And I saw it and I tweeted back to the person who I saw the infographic from. And I said, because it showed that Bitcoin's relative cost per transaction in energy is very low. It sounds like it's high because of the amount of mining that goes on. But then when you actually factor in all of the costs of the actual um, financial system that exists, not just the point to point transaction of Visa, but all of the other transactions that have to go along with all the other energy that's spent in order to prop up that system, it's much, much higher, right? The current monetary system is actually terribly energy inefficient. And at least that was the argument that this infographic or this, this, this chart I saw, but I couldn't get the guy to give me his, the source of his data. So salted to taste, okay? Um, but my, my thought on this is that that's probably correct. But even if it's not correct, I've been saying this for a long time as well. This is something I floated back in, oh, goddamn fucking January about, um, about, about cryptocurrency auditing or cross asset chain auditing and tying um, security auditing, right? So I don't know if you guys know that, but I'm a big fan of um, one of the cryptocurrencies I'm a big fan of is Komodo. Why? Because Komodo is like a tech guy and the Komodo has unbelievable fucking technology. And the reason why Komodo has unbelievable technology along with transaction scaling and, 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 and now unbelievable transaction scaling is because what Komodo does is that no matter how big the Komodo blockchain is, and it's a blockchain development plat platform, but you modularly can deploy your blockchain on Komodo, which is separate from the Komodo blockchain, unlike Ethereum, where they're all kind of running on Ethereum at the same time, which is insanity and stupid, yet we hold Ethereum in the portfolio. Um, but because um, Komodo's blockchain is then tied to the Bitcoin blockchain by totaling up all the transactions on the Komodo blockchain over an hour, taking that, rolling that into one Bitcoin block, and then, trans and then sending that to the Bitcoin blockchain, thereby 
gaining the security function of Bitcoin's block insanely large mempool. And now all of a sudden, this little blockchain has this insanely large mempool of security behind it because now both blockchains have to be hacked in order for like through a 51% attack or whatever in order to now imagine that with 15 small blockchains like Dash and Zcash and Bitcoin Gold and Bitcoin Cash and all the rest of them and they're all just kind of randomly sending blocks to each other to audit each other and no one knows the algorithm for that because it's all being independently run. That's a neural network of small blockchains that no one will ever be able to 51% attack. And they all use one one hundredth of the power that Bitcoin does. So if it ever gets to be a problem, that's gonna be your solution. The destruction of the Lira will actually be great for tourism and experts, not all bad. No, it's not, they'll be fine. It, it's going to be horrible in the short term. The Turks are going to have to eat dirt. It's going to be terrible. But if they accept IMF austerity and if they accept the, an IMF bailout package, they will do. We are going to do to Turkey that what we want to do right now to Turkey is what we did to Russia in the nineties. I'm telling you. <laughs> ah. All right. What else we got? Uh, my take on the Perkel, uh, the Putin Merkel meeting of this weekend, a uh, Nord Stream status. I think Nord Stream two will go through. Um, the Putin Merkel meeting. If you looked at, uh, I, I wrote, I, I talked about this actually yesterday. Um, you're more than welcome, Rexman. Um, I think it was mostly a charm tour. It was designed to humanize Putin to the European, across European media. So he went and he visited, he did the, the uh, attended the wedding of the Austrian uh, foreign minister. He met with Merkel. Go ahead and look and do a, do a, a search on the Putin-Merkel summit. And then go look at the pictures that were released from that. It's Putin and Merkel having tea on a veranda with a green, with you know with greenery in the background it's a charm tour and if you think that our media is virulently anti-putin you ain't got nothing over on german media and i think that this was a i think this is a setup for a longer i think this is the beginning of the turn in European Russian relations uh now that Trump has made it abundantly clear that he doesn't want to pay for Germany's defense anymore and that the globalists and everybody are starting to um um that they're going to make their, their shift away from the United States though they're not going to give going to let Russia off the hook I think Merkel since she's on her last legs politically may actually be able to in her final days as days in power days months years in power um wind up being the one that fundamentally changes the way her does business i'm not quite sure about that at this point i just know that there's something going on here that's that was very off about this meeting over the weekend i didn't expect much out of it concrete there was nothing concrete no just no discussion on sanctions or anything along those lines it was simply a i think a charm tour and uh to re to reintroduce putin to europe in a way that was that is um what's the word i'm looking for uh acceptable and to start the de and to start the de demonization process. All right, I'm just about finished here. I'm looking like my bandwidth is starting to drop. I'm not sure why, so I'm going to go. Uh, if you guys want to uh, get an introduction to my work, what uh, out of my head is asking for, it's really simple. Just watch a lot of the videos that I've been doing recently on YouTube. I've got the, something a list called the short news. S six to 12 minutes or so watch those it's about news of the day or whatever you can also just check out the work over goldgoatsandguns.com and um peruse some of the back articles um and if you're interested um and if you're interested 
further, um, you know, consider um, supporting us on Patreon. So you can support me on Patreon over at Gold Goats, uh, Patreon slash Gold Goats and Guns, and we'll do that. So I know the, the stream is getting a little ugly here. Um, good evening, Arjun Kapoor from... Uh, What's my take on India in the current scheme of things? I think India is in a is playing like much like, in, uh, like Turkey had been playing for a long time, playing both sides against the middle. But I think they're rapidly moving in to the orbit of the Russian, Chinese, Iranian axis uh, axis as that forms up, and the more and the more that firms up, and its opposition to the United States Empire firms up, the more you'll see India continue to firm up in their support of the whole thing. So. Uh, actually, nobody's home. It's Monday night. The girls are at uh, Taekwondo. I don't know why my stream just flickered because there was no reason for it to flicker. So, um, I, and I think that every day that this goes on, every day I'm seeing more and more, uh, more and more of a situation where our guys in Afghanistan are going to be left out to hang. Because you remember that the the longer this goes on with us in Turkey, the more. Um, tenuous the position that our guys in Afghanistan have as the logistics and the supply lines get cut because Turkey could easily just shut down insert like tomorrow and we now have a very um, un we now have a, uh, we now have a, a, a new what do you call uh, a new prime minister in Pakistan. I'm kind of like watching the stream health here and I'm trying to see if I'm even still online. Um, that Imran Khan as the prime minister of Pakistan, to me, that signals that we're going to be, we're looking at a different era of US-Pakistani relations, which is not good for the neocons. And everybody's panicking about that as well. All right, you guys take care. If you have any questions or if I didn't, or if the stream cut out on you while I was trying to answer your questions, you're more than welcome to email me or DM me on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter, TFL1728. Um, there's links down below in the uh, description below. You can also, um, uh, you can follow my work over at goldgutsandguns.com. And of course you can follow me on Patreon. If you like what you saw here tonight, please like and uh, subscribe to, to the, to the channel and uh, set notifications for when I go on live. I do this on Monday nights at 8 o'clock and Friday nights at 9 o'clock live streaming. Otherwise, I'm kind of on during the, the rest of the week doing more structured stuff. So you guys take care. You have a great night. Keep your stick on the ice.